So the first thing of course we need to do is to make the drawers and we need to know a dimension of them and all of these full extension glides um, are are, uh, I've never seen one that is not a half an inch and when you put the two of them together they should be one inch so you want to make your drawers one inch smaller than the opening that they're going in and I just I always like to check to make sure that there nothing's changed and in this case the, that opening is going to be 17 inches I already know the depth of it because I had to know that in order to order the slides themselves and these are 16 inch so as long as the drawer is 17 inches wide and no longer than 16 inches that's really all we need to know okay so let's concentrate on the top drawer for starters um, this is the front that will be the back and these will be the sides and I haven't I've cut them to height but I haven't cut them to the proper length yet so what I need to do now is to take these and do some quick measurements to figure out exactly the lengths that I want. Now the other thing that I need to do is I'm going to need to cut a dado in all of these and that's the reason that I mark the top of all of these with blue um, paint, uh, tape. Okay I've set up a dado blade in here. I'm actually using something called the wobble wheel because my standard dado blade set is too wide and uh, this is a 3 16 so I've set the blade to a 3 16 and I, you can see that I've done a couple of tests here and there's the 3 16 and it just you now it does fit in there actually there it is there just Okay, so there's all of the pieces and you can see the, the dados cut in all of them, even the back. Now the back isn't going to have a dado because what we typically do in the back is we slide the bottom in and then the back will actually fit with a dado on the sides or we can just sort of um, fasten it in there. But the bottom will fit underneath this so this eventually I will be cutting this bottom off so as you probably already noticed I'm using plywood for the for the drawers uh, I prefer to use natural wood but I had some of this spare plywood around so I'm sort of using the bits and pieces of it that I can for that reason I've decided to use dowels here because it'll be a stronger a stronger joint than anything else. I don't really like doing dovetails in plywood. Uh, it just doesn't look that great. So anyway, I'm not going to show you the whole drilling here. I'll, I'll refer you to the video that will show up in this corner up here uh, if you want to get to know more about using dowels. Okay, so I'm ready to do the assembly for the top drawer. And as we already know, I've cut all the pieces, I've cut the dados, the dowel holes, everything's ready to go. And I've even done a dry fit and everything fits together nicely. So now I'm just going to do the glue up and I'm gonna speed this up so that you're not just sitting around watching, um, filling glue holes and so on. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this together and then I'll drop the bottom into it as well. And then we'll let it dry and harden. Okay, so this is the front of the drawer, and I'm just curious to see. Yeah, that's yeah, that's perfect. All right. Now the last thing to do, and I'm this has just been glued up. You've just watched this been glued up. I'm going to put the back in, and I like to put the back in while everything is still a little bit um, in the gluing up stage, because I want any glue, any excess glue that there might be down in there I want that to be sort of touching onto that bottom there 
because if I try and put this on after this glue is hard, then sometimes you can't get the drawer in. So there's the bottom. There it is. I'm going to do a last double check. And that looks good. If one side's good, the other side should be fine. So, all right, that's good. So here's my final drawer and it's dry and hard. The glue's hardened. Uh, I'm ready to use the drawer. Now, one final thing I like to do with drawers before I install them is to go along the inside and do a round over. And that's because when you put your hand into drawer, sometimes there's something near the edge and you know, there's a, a sharp edge on all of these drawers. This makes a huge difference. So let's have a quick look at this drawer slide. And this one has holes at the back and one hole at the front. Then it has different holes all the way along. Some of them are slotted and some of these drawer slides will have vertical holes. This one has just horizontal holes and they have these little indentations here. You can use any or all of these to attach to whatever cabinet you're using. You can use the just the front and the back, which is what I'm going to use. These little things here, these little clip things, what these are for is if your drawer is a little bit undersized, you can actually push these out so they will sort of come out a little bit and what you can do then and that makes that drawer side come out from your cabinet a bit so it gives a little bit more leeway in what you do when you're making cabinet or when you're making drawers you never want them to be tight you want them to be a little on the loose side because this will this can help you fill that little bit of a gap but if they're too tight you'll never get them in and out you'll struggle with them every time so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using the front and the back here. And the next thing I need to do, oh, and by the way, these are um, soft clothes. They were very inexpensive, um, soft clothes, full extension drawers. And um, you can see when you push them in, they sort of go in by themselves. So I've never used these before, so, um, but they should be fine. The other thing with full extension drawers, they always have some sort of a pin thing or a clip thing where you can pull them out and when you put them back in you usually need to push them all the way in for that catch to re-grab and then when you pull it out they lock. So the next thing I need to do now is to figure out where they're going to be in the cabinet. There's many different kinds of drawer slides. This is kind of a generic version. Some of them want to attach to the bottom of your drawer and many people install these slides so they're at the bottom of the drawer, but they don't have to be. You can put these anywhere. They could even be at the top of the drawer if you wanted. In my case, I'm going to align them around the middle like that. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is I want a little bit more leeway to work with underneath the drawer because these are going to be inset drawers. So they're going to go inside this cabinet here. And the reason I'm doing that is I, because it's sitting on a sander and there's going to be sand in the, in the area, I don't want the, the outside of the drawer to be extruding out from the cabinet. It's just going to pick up more dust. So that's the reason I'm doing it this way. So the first thing I need to do is to figure out how to get this side and this side an equal distance apart and where I'm going to position them. So I'll show you how that is. So there's all sorts of ways you can figure out where you want your slides to go. You can do something as simple as putting, measuring a couple of sticks, one on each side from the bottom of the cabinet and putting your, laying your slide on that. In my case, I'm just doing this. Because mine is a portable unit, it's not going to be uh, sitting on, well, it's going to be sitting on the floor, but it's going to be moving around. I just got a piece of wood with my carpenter square. I cut a slot on it with my table saw. It's all square and even. And all I'm going to do with this is align this with the front of my cabinet, drop it down to that angle. And I'm just going to hold that on there for right now. And all I'm going to do now is to draw a line under there 
and that's where I'm going to be putting my the bottom of my slide and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I'll do that all the way down While I'm down here, I might as well do all of these slides all at the same time. Of course, I'm working on my side now, or the cabinet side. There we go. One of the things I forgot to record when I was putting the slides in was how you position this part here on the drawer. Because I've already got the slides in on the cabinet, but these are taken out to install them in the drawer. And in this case, it's very simple because all I needed to know was that I wanted the shelf to be above this cross member part. So what I did, I just got a little piece of wood. I think it's an eighth of an inch or something. And you can see that there's plenty of room in there. And from this piece of wood, I was able to measure the, this part here was already installed and because there are center holes in this all I had to do was measure that part to the center hole and that gave me how high that drawer needed to be or that slide needed to be. So then when I put this out here and measure up the same distance you can see that there's a little mark in here so I put a mark at the front here and one at the back and drew a line all the way across them and then each one of the center holes along here then lined up with that line and that was how just how easy it is to install this part and then when you go to putting this in you just the drawer of course is apart you just literally just slide it in it's really that easy okay so I got the rails on there now with some lock. Maybe a lot of luck. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay. And I had to push all the way in for them to relock. And now it should, yeah, there we go. At the very last little bit of it, it draws itself in. Okay, so that's perfect. I'm just going to carry on and finish up the rest of these. And then when I come back, we'll start putting some faces on. Okay, so I've taken time and I now have all the drawers in and they're all working just fine. Now I want to put a face on and they're an inset face as you already know. So what I have here, I found the first piece of spalted wood that I had, it's not going to work. Then I found this old board and this is one that I cut off from a tree that I felled on my property a few years ago. It's nice and dry. And it's not very wide and it tapers down quite a bit, quite small here. So it would be perfect for sort of being able to do something like this. Okay, so let's trim one of these boards up. I'm just using my uh, mag switches to lock my L fence in place. So that's sitting on top of my table saw fence right now. And as we already know, I've got some wood here that's a live edge on both sides. I can't run that through the table saw without having one side perfectly straight. And the way we do that is with this L fence. And it basically is duplicating. It's also called duplicating. It's duplicating my fence underneath. So this is absolutely parallel to the fence underneath. So now what I can do, I can take my piece of wood and I can put an anti-skid material on top of it, just like that. And now I can put another absolutely straight piece of wood on top of this. And I just want to take a tiny bit off of that so it's nice and straight. And what happens now, this is going to ride against this, which is now the new fence. 
and the blade is just barely, I've already set that, it's just barely above the material and I'm going to put this new fence just barely on the outside of that fence so it will cut an absolutely straight line. I'm going to turn the dust collector on and we'll run that. And that is an absolutely safe way of getting a perfectly straight line. Okay, let's do one quick dry fit before we go to finishing. Make sure that that's no oh, good. All right, perfect. Okay, all right. So we'll do some sanding and some finishing. Now I have the drawer fitted the outside of the drawer is all fitted but what I left a little bit of wiggle room with remember when I put these on I used the sideways the horizontal slot there and that's because I thought I might want to move the drawers back and forth and in fact I have and now I'm doing the final fitting because I've loosened the screws all of these slotted screws on the horizontal there's two on each side and now when I push this in and I've already pushed it because the drawer is a little bit loose in there, now I can push that back just a tiny bit and that way I can get a perfectly flush side on here. So the next thing now, because I've got this all fitted, I'll put the blocks in there and I'm going to use some double-sided tape and just tack that on there and then from the back side I will um, put some screws from the back side Okay, so I've got my little spacers. I've, I have them all just taped on with some um, very thin tape. And now I've got, you can barely see, but I do have some double-sided tape on the back. It's really sticky stuff. It should work good, but to be on the safe side, I'm also going to drive in a couple of 23 gauge pins there because I don't want this thing to come off once I get it in there. And now I can just slide, hopefully, slide that in there. Come off. There we go. On pretty good. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go ahead now and I'll do the rest of these. And when we come back, uh, I'll be able to put on the hardware. Okay, so that's all done. And all of the drawers I've done a, a little bit of a lining in terms of um, so that they're all flush with the front um, and all of the holes look like they're all balanced. The other thing with the handles on this, they're not, you find if you look closely, they're not exactly in the middle. They're a little tiny bit above middle and that's especially true when you get something like this on the floor. If you put them in the middle, it looks like they're too low. So it's a little bit of an optical illusion. So what we do for that is we move them up just a tiny bit and that way when you get it standing on the floor, it looks like they're in the middle. So that all worked out well. The next thing I have to do and the last thing I have to do, I'm going to take the top off the old stand and put that on here. I'm going to put a little bit of trim around it and um, and that's done. So I'm just going to do that off camera so when you see it next time uh, it'll be all done and probably even have the sander on it. Well I'm finally finished and of course this concludes my video on making an oscillating sander stand complete with three drawers and they're even soft clothes. I now have a place to put all of my bits and pieces here so I know where they're at and they're not going to get covered with dust. Easy to find and I even have three more or two more drawers that I can put other things in and get a bit more organized. Now I have to say I'm I don't really want to brag here but seriously this could be the prettiest sanding stand you might ever see but I'll let you be the judge of that. I had a lot of fun building this. I had as much fun building this as I did building my antique 
ice box stand a few years ago. I'll put that video up here if you want to go and have a look at it. To this day, it's probably still my favorite build that I've ever made. Um, but this is running a close second, so you can check both of them out. And again, you can make your own decisions on them. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.